The Nikon ZF comes with a host of new features and we are very excited to test these out. The one we're going to test today is pixel shift shooting. That's the first one for Nikon. Came with this camera. This will allow you to take four or eight images stuck at the same resolution, but also 16 or 32 images stuck at whopping 96 megapixels, which basically will double the pixel size from 6,000 pixels to 12,000 pixels. So we're gonna do a quick tabletop test and have a look at the results to see if we can see the difference between those different outputs. Come along with us. First shot we're gonna do is just a regular photo. Then we're gonna put the camera onto pixel shift shooting and we're gonna try a few options and see if we can actually see a difference. compare the images on screen side by side. So on the left hand side, we have our reference image, which was just a single shot taken with the ZF without any pixel shift. The second frame, which is on the right hand side, is our four stacked image. So first up, let's look at sharpness. Do you see a difference? If you look close by around the DF and the texture, you'll see a slight improvement in sharpness on the merge shot, but it's very subtle, but it is there. What you need to keep in mind that actually, while the resolution of 24 megapixels stays the same, so pixel size is at 6048 pixels wide, the actual megabyte size of the file, uh, the original file is 28.3 megabytes, while the merged file of four shots is 126 megabytes. Which is stunning. Now, okay, we didn't see a huge amount of difference in terms of color reproduction. I mean, the full stacked image, if anything, looks, it looks a little bit flatter, if that makes sense. I mean, it does look a little bit sharper on mm. the texture, if you look at the texture. Yeah. But I don't know if it's actually in a, a big improvement there or not, but if you're gonna go and look to the greens, well, I, can, I can see that this area is actually slightly different from this area. Yeah. So There's what, a bit more color. There's a, but like the gradation between the color uh, is slightly different. Yeah. So. What you essentially get with four shots is more information to play with in your resulting file. And as you say, slightly better color gradation and an ever so slightly sharper image. The differences are subtle, but it only takes about one-ish seconds to take that set of four stacked images. So depending on what subject you're shooting, it could be quite useful to have that higher resolution file. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the file that was taken with eight shots. And that one's supposed to give us an improvement in low light as well. So let's have a look at that. I'm gonna just select the frame here. I'm gonna move this eight stack in here. Let's have a look at that. It takes a bit of time to load. So first of all, let's just have a look at the um, actual sharpness. So this is where we were focused on. So looks to me, again, just a tiny bit different. Again, very subtle, very subtle. Mm -hmm. um, but let's go to the shadow details. And let's see if we can find. So both shots are taken on ISO 1100. Well, actually, the stack shot shows us ISO 1000. About a thousand. About a thousand. Yeah. So let's see. It is smoother, but it's not a significant difference. No. I think it's again. It's it's a very very subtle. I mean, if you look at those areas. Yeah. It is very subtle. The only thing I would add to that is that, again, the eight stacked image is 126 megabytes, while the standard file is 28.3 megabytes. So if you need more information to work with, then you've got that in your eight stacked image. Shall we have a look at the 16 stacked image? Yeah, so that one should give us 100 megapixel resolution. That's where we should start to see a higher magnifications effectively. Uh, but let's see if it actually improves on sharpness or not. 
click on file it takes a bit of time to load up because now the file is 492 megabytes in size it's also 12096 pixels wide so it's basically double the size of the 24 megapixels well actually we call it 100 or 96 megapixel file in terms of actual pixel sizes it's about double the size so now we're going to have a look at the sensor sharpness and first thing we see is effectively that the larger file makes a higher magnification uh, would it make a difference in terms of sharpness well maybe i guess to compare it we can't really enlarge the 24 megapixel file because we're going to start to blur it effectively so what, what we're going to do is we're going to downsize the 96 megapixel file to 50 percent so that should make it about the same size yeah and now we can just have a look and see what's the difference is like can you see the difference i can see a color difference actually um more than a sharpness difference but the colors are a bit more vivid isn't it yeah and the interesting thing about the shot on the right which is our 96 meg file is obviously that that you're getting that's 50 percent magnification which is essentially giving you a similar result to what you get if you just shoot without pixel shift but you've got double <laughs> That's Double true. the magnification to work with. But actually, when I'm, if I look at the leather, mm. uh, the original file looks black. Yeah. The leather section of that. But actually, on the 96 megapixel file, it looks slightly bluey. Agrees, yeah. So I wonder if that's to do with our lighting setup that's changed within a fraction of a second. Um, or is actually the pixel shifts somehow adds a little bit more color and a little bit more saturation to the image. Possibly. Let's have a look at the greens. Again, I can see that the green on the 96 megapixel file has slightly more saturation. It almost goes towards yellow, mm. uh, while the green on the on the 26 24 megapixel file is kind of green goes more towards blue. Mm -hmm. If you look at the color temperature, the color temperature is only 10 kelvins different, so it's it shouldn't affect that. No. Um, in terms of noise, I don't see much difference but if we just look at those dark areas over here it doesn't look much difference i think the other file should give us a better understanding so if we're looking at colors i do see that with the 16 picture stacked image you do have a much smoother gradation between light and darker tones so we do we do kind of get what's advertised from the 16 shot stack. Actually, for studio campaigns, that actually would make a lot of difference. But I assume you would still shoot at 100 ISO. So, you know, so you wouldn't have to deal with a loss in terms of color reproduction or noise um, at higher ISOs. But yes, and also we do get this improvement also at much higher resolution. That's right. Should we take a look at the 32? Oh, that's the, that's the, the one. That's the big one. To rule them all. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to move the, again, just the files to the middle. Then we're going to select our 32 images stuck. And that, I can see, is already taking quite a bit of time. The good thing is, in terms of actually megabyte size of the images, it's still 492 megabytes. So even if you choose 16 or 32, the file size is going to stay the same. So it's not going to go to uh, one gigabyte or anything like this. It's still close to 500 megabytes per file, and obviously the uh, pixel resolution is still 12,096. So, first of all, again, I don't see the difference between 16 and 32 in terms of sharpness. So obviously we do get a larger file. Mm. Now, let's have a look at the noise, because everything else should be the same as on 16 images stuck. Yeah. So if you're gonna go to our dark areas over here, it is smoother. I can see it's almost like the texture of the file. If you look at the grain structure mm. on the 24 megapixel image, you can see what we call grain. It's not a film grain, but it's a digital grain. Yeah. Type thing. And it just comes from the high ISO. So yeah, that one is uh, taken at 1100 ISO. So yes, the you don't really see the noise on the 100 megapixel file. Um, so that's not too bad. And then if you start to look at the let's say each other is but that are not too dark again you can clearly see the difference here so it's kind of uh, more of a mid-tone to the shadow areas you can clearly see that there's a texture to the file at 24 megapixels and it's very very smooth at uh, 100 megapixel shot now let's go to the uh, shadow areas here under the shelves 
again, you can clearly see the grain in the shadow areas. And if we look at the 96 megapixel file, it is a lot smoother. Yeah. Does a lot smoother means more detail or not? I don't really see that. So to be honest with you, I don't really see any reduction in detail because effectively we almost think it's like applies a noise reduction. Mm -hmm. I don't see the difference there. And if you again come back to the sharpness of the image in the middle, you can say that they are about the same. The, this, the 32 megapixel image came out a little bit lighter. That's actually where you start to see more detail. Yeah. So if you compare the shot side by side with the standard shot at 200%, which is the same magnification as the stacked shot at 100%, then you really see that the stacked image preserves all the detail. So the advice there really is, yes, if you need a very large frames and when nothing is moving within the frame, it's worth using because A, it happens really, really fast, the images are taken really, really fast. It doesn't take too much time for the software to create a file out of 16 or 32 images. Would you use four or eight images stuck for general use or would you recommend to, if you're doing this, just go full on 16 or 32 images? I would say it depends on how much file you actually need. 126 megabytes of file is a colossal file, really, if you think about it. So do you need a half a gig for a picture? Well, it, it comes down to large printing sizes. I because, think that's it, yeah. Yeah, because the resolution of 4 and 8 stays the same. Mm -hmm. While we obviously effectively double the pixel size uh, at 16 and 32, and we're doing it effectively in the camera instead of, let's say, applying some sort of artificial intelligence to increase the size for us. So we used to have those plugins like uh, digital fractal, genuine fractals mm -hmm. on one software used to do this. Even Photoshop now allows for this. But doing it within the camera, you can clearly see the difference in terms of details. And the advice there, yes, if you need large output, if you don't have anything moving, then you will definitely benefit from this. What I do like is that 16 and 32 image stacks produce the same file size. Yeah. So technically, if you know you need a 500 megabyte raw file, it's fine. I'm sure in TIFF it's going to be even larger than that once you save it. So, That's right. But then it's a critical work. Um, so if it's a critical work, it doesn't matter, you know, in terms of file size, I wouldn't spare any expense. I would want to get the best possible file I can get out of it, regardless of the file size. In order to enable pixel shift shooting, you need to go to the photo shooting menu. It's actually the last bottom option of the menu under pixel shift shooting. Here you have the option to uh, take one pixel shift shot or a series if you want to take several pixel shifted shots in a row. Then you choose the number of shots that you want to take, whether it's four, eight, four, eight, 16 or 32 and the camera does tell you what each one of those offers. Okay, so the four shots should give you an improved color reproduction. The eight shots will give you good color reproduction as well as less noise. And then 16 images stuck will give you improved color at a higher 96 megapixel resolution, while 32 images stuck will give you improved color, better noise at 96 megapixel resolution. Then you've got the length of delay before the shots start to be taken. So if you're on a tabletop and you don't want the camera to start taking the picture until one, two, three, et cetera, seconds after you press the shutter button, that's where you do that. And then the last option is interval until next shot. So you can actually have pixel shift shooting with a short delay between each photo being taken should you want to do that. So what do you think, Becky? Who is this feature for? I think that if you are doing product photography, if you're doing any kind of still life or fine art photography or even studio work where you know that the output of your file needs to be very, very large, then pixel shift shooting is a bit of a game changer because you can do all of that in camera. Yes, and because Nikon ZF has a 24 megapixel resolution file, in some cases it may not be large enough. And in terms of this, now you can get a 96 megapixel out of the same image. There's some caveats though. Obviously those four 16, 32 shots taken 
one after another one. And in terms of this, if you if something is moving within the frame, that may create a bit of ghosting when merging. So for example, you're taking a landscape and it's a little bit windy like it is today, then it may not work really well. You're photographing the seaside with moving waves. Again, maybe not so much. Flowers outdoors with a bit of wind. There's so many examples I can give you with the moving subject outdoors may not work. But indoors where everything is controlled, even the flowers are not moving, then you can definitely do that and you can see significant improvements in terms of detail. We hope you found this first look at pixel shift shooting helpful. And if you like this video, please give us a like and a subscribe. If you found this video super useful, there's super thanks button as well. And do let us know what other features would you like us to test with either this camera or any other Nikon cameras.